Marley Rivera, national baseball writer for ESPN and ESPN Deportes, joins us here on Big Board Sports on this uh Wednesday, is it Tuesday or Wednesday? What day of the week? It's only Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, it's only Tuesday. <laughs> Somebody at the station last night at News Channel 13 said, it's only Monday. I know, we get to Monday, we can't wait for it to, to get to the end of the week, and we go <laughs> round and round with uh, week two now, the NFL season. Marley, Roger Weiland, Chris Honorado in Albany. Good morning. Hi, kids. Good morning to you guys, too. Are you guys still uh, suffering from the Giants loss? <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty <laughs> much. It's still I, very painful. It's just still raw. Uh, but we, we just remarked the last time we had you on when we were going over <laughs> predictions, you did indicate that you did not think the Giants were going to be any good. I just thought that that offensive line, there was just no improvement. So now right now, it's you know, everyone is looking at the offensive line, and I'm going, well, are you surprised? And then <laughs> the exact same one as it happened last year. But you know what? That, uh, that the defense did perform, you know, as expected, but there's nothing you can do when you just, I mean, Eli Manning looked awful because he had no time. So it right. was just really, uh, it was kind of depressing to watch. I have to admit that I did it was the whole thing. It was it was pathetic. It really was just an awful performance by the Giants O line. I don't know. It, it, do you see it getting any better, Marley? I mean, the parts really well, haven't how? changed. I mean, they had so many chances, right? Like there were plenty of free agents up in the off season that they could have taken care of, and they actually chose not to. So, I mean, and and I think that what was difficult to watch is that the Cowboys defense isn't really that good. So then you kind of worry about. You know, what's, what's going to happen when they face someone like, I think, like Philly, who is like a very, very talented uh, defense. So I, I don't know about that. Like, that's going to be interesting to watch. I just don't, I mean, obviously they have to improve, but I always use this line in my show, which is using the offensive principle of war, that the best defense is a great offense. And I feel like that when you, when you are failing in, in, in your offense the way you are, I just don't know that you can help your defense. So then... I just, I just really don't see it. But with improvements in the offense, though certainly, you know, I, I don't see their, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like That's I a think no. about That's it, a no. I'm like, oh, <laughs> how is this going to work? I actually just even contradicted myself just now. I just... I have no idea about that for you. Well, here's the deal. I, I always say every year at about this time coming out of week one, I don't want to overreact to what I saw because it, things do change. The, the personnel is not changing with the Giants' offensive line. However, yes. Marley, let's face it, when Odell Beckham Jr. returns, things will change. But you really want to put all the pressure, like just, you know, naming Odell Beckham the savior. I mean, if, he, if Eli really just has no time to throw to him, I, I just don't know that that's going to be there for him. And I and I understand that Giants fans are reeling. And trust me, you guys can make fun of me because I'm a Jets fan. We're <laughs> way on our way to 0-16, and it's exactly looking like that. So it's okay. But at the same time, I just don't – like, I, Odell can't get it done if Eli doesn't really have time to throw to him. I think Odell Beckham Jr. might like that nickname, the savior. If that might, that, that might <laughs> well, like sure for would. him. Yeah. Certainly <laughs> has a very high opinion of himself. And, and I have to tell you, I have no problem with that. Right. I'm actually one of those uh, – one of those writers and, and reporters that, that welcomes, you know, the, that gusto, like this kind of very full of himself attitude larger than life from athletes. I have no problem with it, but you do have to back it up. He's good and he knows it. Uh, Marley, I, I want to switch yeah. over to, to baseball here. Uh, and, yes. and as I said, uh, going into the break before we had you on here, we, we will ask you to try to explain the inexplicable, that what's going on with Cleveland and LA. But, but first with the Yankees, I mean, it was a, a strange kind of setting last night, very surreal at City yeah. Field with just the lower bowl, uh, sold in, in terms of tickets. But, it, but it's a 5-1 win for the Yanks over the Rays. They now are three games behind the Red Sox in that American League East with 19 games to play. Are you, looking at this Yankees team as one that can still win the division or just setting themselves up for a home wild card game? I kind of feel I'm going to answer your, your question in a convoluted way. I feel like we've been having the same conversation for about a month, and the Yankees kind of hover between that two and a half and four and a half, right, being behind the Red Sox, which I do believe that they're mostly aiming for the wild card right now. I'm not saying that obviously the division is within – within earshot, because as you just mentioned, it's only this amount of games. But at the same time, the Red Sox are playing very well, too. So I just don't think that the Yankees, I don't think they, I do think the Yankees are going to make the playoffs. I think they're probably are going to host that AL wildcard game. But at the same time, I just don't see them bridging that gap 
and completely taking over the division. Now, if they sweep the Rays, they're obviously going to keep continuing gaining ground. But I, I, I still think the Red Sox are better and they're going to uh, go, go with this division. But I think we're going to have this exact same conversation in about a week from now. Nothing is going to be determined till very much the last couple of games of the season. Marley Rivera with us, national baseball writer for ESPN, ESPN Deportes on Big Board Sports on 104.5 at Team ESPN Radio. Are you more surprised that the Cleveland Indians have won 19 straight or more surprised that the Dodgers <laughs> have lost 11 straight? That is a great question. I actually was thinking about which one has been more surprising to me. I think that I'm going to have to go with the Indians. And it's because, you know, you're going for this record, this, this team – was looking great, especially their pitching was looking so extraordinary. But what they've done in this, you know, like whatever this 100-plus run differential and everything like that, I think that's been incredibly surprising. Not that the Dodgers losing 11 straight, it's not surprising, but the Dodgers were due for, for going through a rough stretch in the season, right? This is a team that, what was it, they didn't lose a series for like the, the longest period of time since like June until they finally lost one, I believe, to the Diamondbacks. So then I kind of feel like the Dodgers were due for some losses now to the dramatic fashion that they've done it now, losing a, you know, a 20 and a half game lead in the division and being reduced now to nine. That's an entirely different story. But I do think that what the, what the Indians are accomplishing, I just didn't see it coming. That, that pitching staff is, is splendid. They're performing so well, but it was erratic at times. So I do think that the fact that they're clicking along cylinders to use one of those cliches, um, phrases at this time of the year has been extremely surprising to me. And to see them now running away with the Central, which was really, really highly contested, especially with uh, Minnesota at one point uh, in the season, it's just extremely surprising to me. And I, you know, when did you think that we were going to say, when are the Cleveland Indians going to lose? Like, it's the opposite conversation now. It's not that, you know, you're just wondering if they're gonna, when, when it's going to be the next game they're going to lose and going for a for a record like 20 games straight, it's pretty impressive. Marley, last thing from me. I really enjoyed Tony Romo in his first NFL broadcast <laughs> on Sunday. He's uh, very good. Yeah, yeah. I, I really did. I, I thought so. Um, if if you could pick one current baseball player mm. to jump into the booth, who would it be? Does he have to be interesting or not? <laughs> <laughs> well, ideally, I think, right? <laughs> uh, you have to be careful. And I think that Tony Romo is not particularly interesting. He's Good. So I think if I'm going to go, which is purely like just the way he breaks down things, I'm going to go with Andrew Miller. Ooh, okay. The way when you speak to Andrew Miller and the way he talks about pitching, he's probably one of the smartest baseball players that I've known. He's just not very interesting. It's not a sexy pick. You know what I mean? So it's not a, it's not the one that maybe is going to tune everyone who's going to put their TV sets to that channel to watch him do a pregame. But the way that Andrew Miller can break down pitching he can break down hitters. It's just extremely interesting. He actually, when he used to be with the Yankees and the Red Sox, would break down the way he would throw pitches to me and the way the grips happens on the scenes and, and just the approach he had to hitters. And I think that he's one of the ones that I learned the most about pitching from and how he reinvented himself. Now, it's not a sexy pick. So you just want to go with someone kind of crazy and kind of nuts and fun to watch, I would go with Jose Ramirez. You wouldn't understand half of what he's saying, but he'll be a lot of fun to watch. <laughs> and, and by the way, Marley, uh, I do have the uh, the um, a name for you. The Giants in the yes. uh, off season d- did sign some some kid named uh, DJ Fluker. Oh yeah, yeah. So Fluker is on the <laughs> roster. Uh, as I back. apologize. <laughs> After he flamed you out know, in San Diego. I, I knew that I yeah. would be wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. I because... have told you, I am a, I'm a baseball writer. You know, my, my NFL <laughs> fandom has really taken a hit with uh, I love the New York Jets. <laughs> oh, man. Well, listen, it's it's going to be fun the rest of the NFL season. And certainly, we got playoff baseball right around the corner. We'll be back in touch, Marley. Thanks for a few, few minutes and keep up the great work. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I look forward to speaking to you guys soon.